Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your holiness. Um, second Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Uh, I welcome everyone to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Maudi Swami Maharaj uh, to enlighten us on topic of uh, glories of Srimati Radharani and uh, uh, Sri uh, Sita Thakurani. And uh, before um, handovering the call to Guru Maharaj, um, I would like my Prabhu to introduce Guru Maharaj uh, on the call. Um, one second. Hare Krishna, please accept my member of business. All good to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Uh, um, I will humbly you know, um, read about Maharaj and introduce to everybody on the call. Uh, Maharaj was born in New Jersey, USA in 1947. And he came into contact with Krishna consciousness in Denver, Colorado at the age of 24 in 1973. And he began Krishna consciousness preaching and practicing in, in New York City and shortly thereafter began serving at the New Vrindavan Farm community in West Virginia. That same year he received initiation from his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And in 1986, Maharaj accepted the Sanyasa order and began preaching in Cincinnati and Columbus, Ohio. In the early 1980s, he became involved with the ISKCON prison ministry in the USA and began visiting prisoners and holding programs in jails along with regularly writing letters to inmates and sending them to the Prabhupada's books. Maharaj is now the leader of the ISKCON prison ministry and has worked tirelessly to document the spiritual progression of the worldwide inmate community. His dedication to the welfare, growth and sustainable rehabilitation of these prisoners has culminated in the book Holy Jail, a touching compilation of the activities of the ISKCON prison ministry. In over 30 years of operation, the lives of hundreds of inmates have changed due to the practice of Krishna consciousness and the support received by devotees. In 1995, Maharaj began serving as the resident sannyasi in Chicago, where he was based until 2013, when he relocated to Karlovac, Croatia. And presently, Maharaj offers a spiritual guidance around Europe, USA, and India. Maharaj is a disciple of his con, founder AC Acharya Sri and Divan Grace is with Esi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and an initi initiating spiritual master within the ISKCON community. Thank you, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All the way. Prabhupada, Hare Krishna, Jai Ho. Just a point of information there is the second book, yeah. also called Forbidden Voices. <clears throat> yes, Maharaj. Um, uh, which is uh, more of a uh, direct connection with the words of the inmates who were practicing Krishna consciousness in the prisons. Um, it's, uh, we call it more like from the inside out. Yes, Maharaj. And uh, that book is more recent. It's been out for a couple of years now. And uh, uh, that one goes right to the words of the, of course, the first one is all encompassing in terms of the different categories that one we can include, but the second book is more focused on the inmates themselves. And so those books are available through Amazon.com. You can go on Amazon and find the book also. Okay, so today we'll speak. Today is actually the appearance day of Sita Takurani, the uh, consort or you might say the beloved wife of uh, Sri Advaita Acharya, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasadi Gora Bhaktivinda, Umagyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksur Militan Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Vega Maha, Sri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Vidati Swam Padam Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutaleshu Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tiyamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishay Sasunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Tarupascha Vipasindu Pae Vacha Putitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Srivasini, Gaur, Bhakta Vinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> what is available on the life of Sita Thakurani is very much what you can find in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, which mostly focuses on when Lord Chaitanya appeared in this world. When the ladies in the villages around, and of course the great Acharya being the prime, uh, <clears throat> uh, what we say, uh, what's, what's the word? Uh, he was the head of all the Brahmin community in Shantipur. He had two places. He had a house in Shantipur. He also had a place in Navadweep. Mm -hmm. His good wife was Sita Takarani, and he had six children. And uh, it's mentioned that three of them actually were favorable to the, their father's activities and were also spiritually inclined and three were not. So we see even in the family of great souls, the Dvaitacharya is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is Mahavishnu himself. And so his uh, personality is, is on the level of the Godhead. Out of the Panchatattva, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, the first three are what we call uh, uh, Vishnu Tattva, then we have Gadadhar Shakti Tattva, and then we have Srivas, who was Jiva Tattva. So the five are there, and they make up the Panchatattva. So Advaita Acharya, he is Mahavishnu, but he also has an element of Sadashiva as part of his personality, part of his, his identity. And uh, we know when Lord Chaitanya first, just before Lord Chaitanya appeared, there were different reasons to bring about the appearance of the Lord. And Sri Advaita Charya was one of those main factors. By his sincere prayers, in uh, feeling compassion for the fallen souls in the area, seeing that they were wasting their time in materialistic endeavor, and it was quite interesting the time when Lord Chaitanya appeared, Navadweep was the bastion of education without practically they sometimes they say within the whole world. And scholars from all over the world would travel to Navadweep to get the best of education. But there was little education on bhakti. Most of the education was on worship in the area of worship, was on worship of the devas and the demigods. And there was a lot of, lot of Shakta worship also. And so Advaita Acharya, being the Supreme Personality of God, and seeing people wasting their life in worshiping uh, those elements of worship that cannot bring one to the goal of life, which is pure love of God or devotion to God, <clears throat> he was feeling at first quite angry. But then his anger transformed into a type of compassion. And in that compassion, he started to pray to the Supreme Lord for the Lord to appear. And it is explained that when Lord Chaitanya was here, he had also mentioned that he had can't come because of the prayers of Sri Advaita Acharya. So Advaita Acharya was a very respectable person <clears throat> in all sense of the word. He was the head of the Brahmin community. He was also quite wealthy um, in terms of his material existence. Uh, he had received so much, uh, what we say, gifts. Brahmins don't work. It's not the business of a Brahmin to take occup occupation in this world. A Brahmin is mentioned as patan, patan, yajan, yajan, dana, patigraha. A Brahmin is First in six activities, and that is to uh, know the scriptures, to teach the scriptures, to know the process of deity worship, and be able to teach that process to others, to give in charity, and also accept charitable gifts. And these are the six activities of a Brahman. A Brahman would never work for anyone. 
a Brahmin would starve, a Brahmin would beg, or somehow or other get whatever he, he needs by collecting whatever is left in the paddy fields, as is mentioned in Bhagavatam, and or accepting gifts like that. But the Brahmins would never take up employment in order to maintain their existence. This is completely opposite of the medical life. <clears throat> so he was the head of a Brahmin community and quite wealthy because he had received so many gifts. Mm-hmm. Let's well, explain his good wife, when she had heard about the appearance of the Lord, Sita Devi, who is worshipful, as good as her husband, uh, took permission and went to that child to offer gifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She brought all kinds of golden ornaments, including armlets, necklaces, ankles, and bangles. Also, tiger nails set in gold, waist decorations of silk ornaments on the hands and legs, printed silk saris, and the and many child garments made of silk. Now you can see from these gifts, and we also go back, this this was uh, the land of India 530 years ago. <laughs> there was no, what we say, poverty. Uh, poverty is this idea that is propagated by the uh, Western uh, reporters that India is poverty stricken. But even in the villages, people live according to their needs. And so there's no question of poverty. Nobody is starving. Everybody gets what they need, but they might live very simple. But you see here from this description of the gifts that she made. Also, there were other things she included, including gold and silk coins were also presented to the child. (coughs) And so we can Uh, rightly conclude that this idea of poverty that is sometimes presented in that area of the world is simply some propaganda. Uh, Now we might say we are more in poverty than we are before. Now everything is either plastic or some corrugated wood. Everything is synthesized and artificial nowadays. Houses are made of cheap wood and uh, they are quite, <laughs> especially in America, I know the houses are just so cheaply made and so quickly made so they can make a house and sell it as fast as they can. But houses were made out of, you know, be- nice, beautiful bricks and uh, many, columns made out of ivory and very, very costly jewelry. And so this was there even during the time of Lord, Ch- Lord Chaitanya. And of course, being the head of the Brahmin community, he was quite wealthy. So the gifts that he received, gave were me- are mentioned here. And uh, so his wife, and then she also, says, riding on a palaquin covered with a cloth and accompanied by maid servant, Sikhar Takarani came to the house of Jagannath Mishri, bringing with her auspicious articles like fresh grass, paddy, gura, chana, turmeric, kumkum, and sandalwood. Now, if you want sandalwood, it's under government control. Especially in India, I, I know I would try to purchase some sandalwood oil, oil and it was extremely expensive to get sandalwood oil and only certain shops would carry it and uh, the shops would only get their oil with government permission and they had to pay an extra tax in order to sell sandalwood oil so it was very expensive it's also mentioned that she went riding on the palaquin Alpha makes a nice point in this discussion that a respectable lady would not go out in public uh, to be viewed by the common men. A respectable lady, when she had to travel, she would travel in a covered palaquin carried by assistants or servants like that. Prabhupada makes one point where um, 
Um, his mother, even if she had to go to the house next door, she wouldn't walk. A palaquin would come and she would be carried over. So that was about a hundred years ago. And that was still very much as part of the standard culture for ladies at that. So it's mentioned here. And it goes on to say, Sita Takarani, she came to the house of Sachi Devi for many edibles, different kinds of dresses, gifts. And she astonished when she saw this beautiful, beautiful, gorgeous baby. Uh, babies, when they're first born, you can't really say that they're so beautiful. <laughs> but the Supreme Personality of Godhead at any time in his appearance, in any form that he appears in, always carries the element of um, his Aishwarya, and one is beauty. I mean, very beautiful. When she saw the beautiful child, she was astonished and appreciated. And then, except for the difference in color, she could understand that he was directly Krishna of Sri Goku. Yeah. And of course, it describes many of the things. Seeing the transcendental bodily effulgence of the child with such beautiful constructed limbs and signs resembling that of gold, Sita Takarani was pleased and, be and because of material affection. Maternal, I'm sorry, maternal affection. She felt as if her heart was melting. She blessed the newborn child by praising the gifts. May you be blessed with a long duration of life. But being afraid of ghosts and wishes, she gave the child the name Nimai. So Nim, there is a tree called a Nim tree, and ghosts and witches will not go near a near neem tree because it it has a certain effect. And people use neem in order to keep away birds. This is still very much the tradition in present day India. So she named him Nimai. So of course his actual name was given was Vishwambar. Vishwambar was, um, of course, his mother used to call him Nimai. Well, Vishwambar was the name given. And uh, Vishwambar actually means one who maintains the entire universe. Mm -hmm. So the name was appropriate for the child, who was none other than Sri Krishna himself. So this describes. In essence, um, a little bit about Sita Takarani. It says, on another day, the mother and the son bathed and left the maternity home. Sita Takarani gave them all kinds of ornaments and garments and also honored Jagannath Mishra. She was honored by Sachi Devi and Jagannath Mishra. And after great happiness, she returned to her home. Prabhupada goes on to say that the, nowadays the maternity uh, room is simply the hospital. <laughs> but in traditional society, and even in Western traditional society, the women would give birth at home in a very purified room assisted by a wet nurse and in that way everything would be done nicely at the home and everything was when Papa said now we go to hospitals pay large fees in order to deliver a child um, <clears throat> I was recently not recently maybe a little bit more than a year ago yeah, no, not even a year ago. It was September of last year. Um, I was hearing the stories of many of the ladies who were at New Vrindavan in the old days and how they gave birth 
without the help of any doctors at the time um, in places like the barn where we would keep cows. Many of the women would give birth in the barn. Of course, it wasn't the best situation, but that's all we had. And of course, there was nothing lacking in the birth arrangements. Everything was taken care of by the devotees. So um, here, Prabhupada wants to make the point that this, this idea of hospitals is something new that are used now for women to take birth. Of course, whatever works the best, you might say we can't find fault with hospitals, but we can say whatever works the best is actually what is needed. But because today we find it very convenient to go to hospitals, all these other arrangements are not even considered. Okay, this is a little bit about the life of Sita Takarani. She was a very respectable and very, what we say, pure hearted lady. As it mentions, she was worshiped on the same level of her husband. She had six children, three were glorious and three somehow or other turned away from the path of bhakti and adopted the, another path um, so this is a little bit about Sita Takarani. Um, we don't have a lot of information coming from Chaitanya Charitamrita. I'm sure if we search through other various literatures, such as the works given by Vindavanta uh, Thakur, we might find more information about Sita Takarani. She's called Takarani, respectable and spiritually elevated person. So applying that same print name to the ladies, it becomes Takarani. And so this is not a small title. <laughs> it is, it's even above the principle of renunciation. It's, it's an exalted title. It's a glorious title. It's a title that is not given surreptitiously or out of some kind of convenience. It is only applied to those who are very highly elevated in spiritual uh, practice, spiritual enlightenment. Let's go see that, Devi. Okay, these are a few things about Sita Devi. I, in the introduction to the class, there was a statement about speaking about Srimati Radharani. Um, I didn't prepare at all for that, but since it is part of the presentation, I will try to say something in relationship to Srimati Radharani in terms of the tattva. Um, Srimati Radharani is the internal energy of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord has three, th three, through three main spiritual energies, which are called Sandini, Sanvit, and Ladini. Uh, Sanvit is his element of eternality, which maintains all of the spiritual existence. Uh, I mean, Sandini is Sanvit is the element by which he knows everything, spiritual and material. And Ladini is his internal pleasure potency, which manifests in the form of Srimati Radharani. <laughs> so Radha and Krishna are actually one. They are none different, but they appear, they separate themselves in order to perform eternal pastimes. Sri Radharani is called Bhakti Devi. Uh, she is the element of pure devotional service to Krishna. All, any bhakti that any of us living entities have within our existence and whatever, uh, to whatever degree that bhakti is there, is just a small drop of the element of bhakti that exists within Srimati Radharani. 
She is the complete manifestation of pure devotional service. Her devotion to Krishna is not ever explained or understood by anyone. Not even Krishna himself can understand her. It explains that Lord Chaitanya appeared in this world to understand three things in relationship to himself. When Krishna was traveling, mm, uh, I'm sorry, when Krishna was at Dwarka and Narada Muni was traveling, he came to the place where Krishna was in Dwarka. Krishna was with his queen, uh, Rukmini, the principal queen in Dwarkadam. And Rukmini was massaging the feet of Dwarkadish. And she said to him, and while she was massaging, her emotions became very uh, visible and she became overwhelmed with love. So much so that she, that she started to pour out her heart describing the glories of Krishna's lotus feet. Well, in her words, she said, she was saying, uh, you don't know, no one knows, actually how glorious their lotus feet are. And she kept repeating that over and over again. The Lord became a little curious, or not only little, but he came, became very curious to understand what is about me that is so wonderful. And finally, in this exchange of love, Rukmini said, my dear Lord, there is one person who understands your glories, Srimati Radharani. She is the only one, no one else. There's no second. So hearing that, the Lord became curious. So he manifested his form as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's form is also eternal. So when we say manifested, that means he decided to appear in that form in this particular time period to experiencing his own uh, good qualities. So Srimati Radharani is the internal mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radha Krishna Nohi Anya. Radharani and Krishna have become one in Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not Radharani, he's Krishna, but he has her mood. And he also has her color. He is called Goranga and she is called Gorangi, golden limbed. So he took on her color and her loving mood in order to come to this world and show compassion for the fallen souls and to experience her love for him, the happiness that she experiences in that love and the good qualities that she experiences in him. So it's mentioned in the Shastras that there are three characteristics of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, which are called the internal reasons for his appearance in this world. And that is to understand her love, to understand, to experience the happiness she experiences in that love and to understand his own, what is it about her that is so what is it about him that is so attractive to her? So this, this appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or the manifestation of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a very unique, a very rare and a very mysterious manifestation of the Godhead. Although Maho, Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namadi Gola Tristena Maha Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself is the most magnificent, magnificent, magnanimous, merciful manifestation ever in the incarnations and appearances of the Lord to the conditioned souls. 
But yet, he remains a great mystery at the same time, as far as his internal mood is concerned. And we can read about that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita as we read his different pastimes in experiencing Radharani's love for him. So Srimati Radharani is uh, that element. Her appearance today comes up on the 26th. And tomorrow is also a very auspicious day. It's the appearance of Lalita Devi. Lalita Devi appears two days before the appearance of Srimati Radharani. Lalita Devi is one of the uh, most confidential uh, friends and also assistants of Srimati Radharani. She has a very unique position amongst all of the gopis. She appears in two of the exalted categories of gopis. There are two categories of gopis that are both exalted. One is called the Astasakis, and one is called the um, the the uh, let's see, mentioned the the the, uh, the main gopis. They're, they are called what is the word? <clears throat> There are two different categories, but Lalita appears in, in both of these categories as both the Astasakis and the uh, uh, Prime Gopis. There are Prime Gopis, that's another category, which has different Gopis than the Astasakis, but Lalita is in all two of those, both of those categories, both categories has eight Gopis. So she's very mm -hmm. unique. And there's many, there's one beautiful pastime. I can tell that pastime. It's about Lalita and Radharani. It's a pastime that is very instructive to all of us. It's a pastime showing the compassion of Radharani and also a little bit about our present existence. Um, there was one jackal. A jackal is not a very popular animal, even amongst animals. A jackal is one that makes very strange noises. <laughs> and it sounds, if you go to Mayapur and you stay in Mayapur, you can hear the jackals screeching at night. Usually in the wee hours of the night, you'll hear a jackal concert. A jackal kirtan, <laughs> and it is very, uh, I don't know, I can't really describe it. Nobody can describe it. What is the experience you have? But it's definitely not the most, what we say, exhilarating experience. <laughs> so jackals, so there was one little jackal, and she, and this jackal was running around in Vrindavan, and two boys who were in Vrindavan, they saw the jackal, so they decided to harassed this little jackal, so they started to chase it. The jackal, being very much frightened, ran into a hole. And the boys, being very, very naughty and mischievous, they put some uh, some leaves, some twigs in front of the hole and set the hole on, and set those on fire and left. So the, the jackal is inside the hole and the smoke is coming in and the jackal can't get out at the same time as it's suffering because of the smoke. So the jackal is crying very loudly. Radharani and Lalita are walking by, and Radharani says to Lalita, you hear that sound? It sounds like someone is in great distress. How could this be? This is Vrindavan. Please, Lalita, find out. So Lalita goes, and uh, she notices the little fire there. Hearing the sound, she follows. She puts out the fire and takes the little jackal in her arms and brings it to Srimati Radharani. And Radharani shows her her kindness to the jackal like that. So this is a very sweet pastime, but it also has a deeper meaning that we are in the fire of this material existence. Dalagni. Uh, Samsara Gava Nalita Loka Karnaya Karana Gana Ganatvam. 
Tatasya Kalyana Yunar Navasyam Bande Guru Shri Charanara Yuna. This material world is meant for the suffering of the living entities. Anyone who tries to become happy in material life, it's like trying to um, it's like trying to lick the honey that's inside the bottle without opening the bottle. <laughs> this is the attempt to become happy in this material world. This analogy is used by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. So this material world is simply meant for the defeat of the living entities. There are so many miseries in this world. And sometimes people suffer so much that they just want to die or they suffer so much that they do die. So this is the material world. It's not a nice place. It's, and it's not meant to be a nice place. But here we are, at least in the environment. But the consciousness should be like the jackal that we are crying out to, to Radharani, please, my dear mother, pick us up from this miserable material existence and situate us at the lotus feet of, the, of your uh, Prabhu, Krishna himself, so we can find the happiness that, that, is, meant, that is meant for our existence. So this is, uh, this is Sri Mati Radharani. So it says that if you want to approach Krishna, you can only approach Krishna through Srimati Radharani. Then Radharani is approached through the process of bhakti and especially through Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya is approached through Lord Nityananda and Lord Nityananda is the manifestation of the pure spiritual master represented by the Guru. So by, by carefully following the instructions of the spiritual master, and enthusiastically worshiping the Lord in devotion, one can chant the holy names of the Lord with uh, relish, with sweetness, with happiness. And then by that chanting, when one develops a taste for chanting, and then the door to Vrindavan Dham is open. And then we can approach Srimati Radharani for her mercy in order to reveal to us the, the sweet mood of Sri Vrindavan Dham, which is the highest spiritual attainment that one can achieve. So Radharani is, uh, she is Bhakti Devi. She is also called Krishna Mai. That's another one of her names. That means that there's nothing else about her than Krishna. She's Krishna inside, she's Krishna outside. And so there are so many beautiful stories connected to the appearance day of Srimati Radharani, which we'll speak about on the actual day at my four o'clock uh, presentation. I'm sorry, not four o'clock. Uh, Four o'clock UK time presentation, which is, a, I think it's, um, I'm not sure what is the time. It's maybe um, seven o'clock in the morning, your time. Or maybe more. No, not that, not that late. You know, it's, it's a lot later. Four o'clock UK time is, is 11 o'clock. Yeah, it's 11 o'clock. Uh, Central Standard Time and nine at uh, eleven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I think most of you online are on Eastern Standard Time. Okay, and then we'll, we'll give a full presentation on the appearance day of Shimati Radharani for those who are uh, desirous. So we want to mention a little bit now just to inspire us to get ready for this wonderful uh, appearance because Radharani is our mother. She is our spiritual mother. Krishna is our spiritual father. So we have our mothers and we have our fathers, but we have our spiritual mother and father. 
who is Srimati Radharani and Krishna himself. And Krishna manifests his mercy through his, his fatherly mercy through the spiritual master and his motherly mercy, he manifests through uh, the process of devotional service. Because Radharani and pure devotional service are absolute in nature. Okay, so we can uh, conclude here for today and see if there's any comments on Sita Thakurani, Lord Chaitanya, Srimati Radharani, Lalita Devi, or just uh, on the process of devotional service. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to Your Holiness. Uh, thank you so much. Such a wonderful class and nice pastimes uh, you, may, you told Guru Maharaj. Um, thank you so much for coming on the call and enlightening on this topic, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. We just touched the surface. We didn't even touch the surface. It's just a little tiny drop. <laughs> so I request the devotees if they have any questions or comments or realizations, uh, they can go ahead and share with Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. have from the chat we have humble obeisances from there's no name there but it's mentioned humble obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas from one devotee Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for the wonderful class. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, so these days, like Lalita Sakhi's appearance day and Radharani's Radhashtam, what should be our mood on these days? How should we, I mean, you know, how? what is the best for us as a sadhaka, especially for me, a neophyte sadhaka? We should, what decorate, should, be our mood? We should, we should decorate the house and uh, <clears throat> we should... Uh, <clears throat> Prepare a wonderful feast in honor of Srimati Radharani and uh, recite beautiful prayers, have kirtan, and have a very joyful festival with as much grandeur and decorations as you can. <laughs> it shouldn't be just another day that we just fast in the morning and then we have a little lunch at lunch and then we, we mention it should be a festival <clears throat> a big festival Maharaj is there any particular prayer or any set of prayers which we can recite Tapta Ganchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Suri Rishabhanu Suti Devi Panamani That's one of the prayers um, I can go can you give me a minute here and I will go to another prayer. Yes, please, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Um, I will find one set of prayers that you might find interesting here. Yes, mm -hmm. please. And these are glorifications of Srimati Radharani. Okay. And let's see what I can find here. How to pray to Radharani. Here it says. 
Rupa Goswami shows us how to pray to Sri Mati Radharani and what to ask for. Yemi Bhakta Jana Partha, Nami Bhakta Chite Janaha, Mad Bhakta Anam Ye Bhaktas, Temi Bhaktatma, Mataha. O Arjun, son of Prita, those who claim to be my devotees directly are not my really my devotees, rather those who are the devotees of my devotees I consider to be my greatest devotees. This is the from Adi Purana. Of all of Krishna's devotees, Radharani is supremely exalted. She is no ordinary mortal like you or me, but the embodiment of his personal pleasure potency. Although distinct and able to engage in loving devotional service to Krishna, Sri Radharani is in fact identical with him. He is the supreme God, she is the supreme goddess. Krishna is the Lord of Vrindavan, the spiritual world, and Radharani is its queen. Thus she is known as Srimati Radharani, the illustrious queen of Radha. The illustrious queen, Radha, Together, Radha and Krishna constitute the absolute truth. <laughs> there is Sri Radhastika, which are prayers given by Sri, uh, Rupa Goswami. I can send this text to uh, Lavanya and Srinivas, and then anybody who wants it can have it. And these are some of the prayers that describe the glories of Sri Rati Radharani. Because the text is quite long and has a lot of prayers like that. These are some things we can let's see if I can find here. Okay, this is the one I was looking for. Radha Rasari Radha Rasevari Ramya Ramya Char Paramatmana Rasu Baba Krishna Kamta Krishna Bhaksa Stala Astita. She is the queen of the Rasa dance. She gives pleasure to Krishna, super soul in the hearts of all. She is Krishna's lover and always situated on the chest of Krishna. One of many beautiful prayers. If you do a little research, you can find this is called Radha Pranama. She is a resident of Gokul Vrindavan and is a cowherd damsel. She is the queen of the gopis and the divine mother of the cowherd boys. She is joyful and always experiencing the highest bliss, and she incites the desires in the heart of the son of Nanda. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, topics about Radharani are very confidential and are not too meant to be discussed in a general audience, especially in regards to her pastimes. And Srila Prabhupada always refrained from discussing many of these things in general, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu strictly avoided that, but we get a little understanding of her glories uh, from the Shastras. I would suggest everyone read the fourth chapter of Adi Lila, and there it's all about Shivati Radharani. That fourth chapter of Adi Lila and Chaitanya Charitamrita is full of the glories of Srimati Radharani and the position of Srimati Radharani. Thank okay. you, Maharaj. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Dhanavad Pranam Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Mamta, how are you? Your audio. Mataji, you are on mute, Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Dhanavad Pranam All Glory, Sri Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much, uh, you know, for giving us your association. We miss you so much in Charlotte. 
I miss everything about Charlotte except one thing, the summer heat. And, and surprisingly, it wasn't very hot uh, this year. It really? has been, yeah, it was uh, mostly cloudy, but maybe you'll feel uh, hot, but it was okay. It wasn't very sunny and it wasn't very hot, so. But everything about Charlotte is wonderful. Yes. Even the heat, even the heat is tolerable. <laughs> and uh, everything, everything, I always enjoy staying with the devotees there and doing programs. A week or so. So since ever, uh, I have been in Charlotte since 2016, 15, and 17, 18. Every year we saw you here and uh, it's been like, you know, festival every time you visited. But this year, you know, um, you you couldn't come and there was such a, you know, big uh, void. But when we see you on Zoom and uh, we get to hear you, it somehow, you know, pacifies us, but it's still not the same. I look forward to coming again when Krishna says it's okay. <laughs> okay. How can, how can we serve you, Maharaj, from uh, like, you know, in this situation? Make a, make a, make a wonderful festival for Radharani. Hari Bol. Your, your name, Mamta, means that Radharani has that name. It means Krishna is mine. Only she has that name, nobody else. She can say, Krishna belongs to me. Krishna belongs to nobody. But Hari only Bhai. Radharani can say that. She's called Mamata or Mamta, same thing. Okay. Maharaj, thank you so much. Your instructions always, uh, you know, save us and, you know, give us relief in this world. Really, thank you so much, Maharaj. Anyone else would like to? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our God is to Srila Prabhupada. Can you hear me? Yeah, Shamgori. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank Hare you. Hare Krishna. Um, as Mamta Mataji said, uh, it's like when you come, it's like a festival in Charlotte. We're supposed to ask a question. Yeah. <laughs> My question is, um, who was the Sita Thakurani in Krishna Lila? In Gaudagana? Oh. I'm not... Hmm. I don't have that knowledge, but I can tell you where you could possibly find it, and that is, there's one scripture called... Gona, Gora, Gora Desh Deepika by uh, Kavi, Kavi Kanapur. Kavi Kanapur, Gora Gona Desh Deepika. It's the who's who in, from the different leelas. So if you can uh, some, secure a copy of that either online or otherwise, you might be able to find a little bit more about Sita Takarani. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, we have a question. Is the reason for, for refraining from talking about the pastimes of Srimati Radharani similar to Sita Takarani writing, cover, writing covered so common men couldn't see her? That's a pretty thin analogy, but what Prabhupada has instructed us that, you know, uh, in a, her pastimes are not for, even for the general audience, because um, people will immediately misunderstand and equate with these leelas to be ordinary. They're not ordinary. The difference between the leelas in the spiritual world and the, and the activities of the conditioned souls in the material world, although appearing to be the same, are as difference between gold and iron. Gold is rare and valuable. Iron is 
base and so readily available. So it's just a matter of not, uh, the audience will misunderstand and when they misunderstand, they conclude wrong and then they conclude wrong, they commit offenses. And so when they commit offenses, then their spiritual life is blocked. <laughs> so therefore one should be very careful. Uh, so we speak a little bit, a lot about the tattva of Radharani and not so much about the leelas. The leelas, you can read about them in, in Prabhupada's books like that. Because Prabhupada's books have the explanations along with the tattva. That's why we give leela, we give tattva with, with leela and not leela itself. Because leela is not understood without Tattva. Tattva means the, the underlining philosophical principles that make up the essence of the Leela. <laughs> There's been many offenses, great offenses, in depicting the pastimes of Radha and Krishna by people in general. And it's not only offense, but it's it's a great tra spiritual travesty because it, it it turns something beautiful into something else. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please uh, accept uh, my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for your very, very, very wonderful and enlightening association, as always. Uh, so Maharaj, about uh, uh, accessing Radha Rani's uh, mercy from sadhaka level. Uh, like we are still a sadhaka, but we are given Brahman initiation and we are... Uh, we are given the opportunity to worship Radha Krishna in the temple. And we are accessing the, her transcendental form. But I mean, from my, my viewpoint, I mean, I'm still in sadhaka level. So I want to know like what, um, how to um, avoid offenses. And for a sadhaka, what is uh, Srimati Radha Rani? What aspects of Srimati Radha Rani should we meditate on? Hear about her appearance. You can hear about her pastimes that are mentioned in Prabhupada's books, like that. I would strongly uh, restrict anyone to hear about Radha Rani outside of Srila Prabhupada because people have a tendency to speculate and add their own, what we say, faulty ideas, uh, lusty desires. Um, our attitude should be very humble, and we can offer prayers to Srimati Radharani. Uh, we pray, when we pray with the Mangala Charnam prayers, Taptakanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavane, Sudhi. Rishabhanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priya. That is also a beautiful prayer. And it's a, it's a recommended prayer. It's a prayer we recite regularly uh, in glorification of Srimati Radharani. We can also hear the pastimes of Gadadhar Pandit, who appears as Srimati Radharani in Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Although his mood is slightly different, still he. He is the manifestation of the internal energy, uh, Radharani, with an element of Lalita Shaki, also within his existence. And so you can hear about Gadadhar Pandit. So I think if we just stick to Srila Prabhupada's books, because Prabhupada's books give the clear explanations of everything he speaks, and his lectures, you, don't, you won't have any problems. I think a problem goes when we go outside of Prabhupada and then we have so many problems. <laughs> Prabhupada's given instructions. He's also given lectures on Radhastami. Mm -hmm. Stick to Prabhupada and you're okay. 
Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your wonderful association. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Yeah, I had one doubt. Uh, like you said, chapter four from Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is Adi Lila, chapter four, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you, Maharaj. Sorry for interrupting. Hare Krishna. No problem. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dhanvat Pranam, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to your services. It is so inspiring to see you and uh, always uh, like in the week we saw you twice. So it's really, really our big fortune to have you. Uh, Maharaj, uh, I had uh, like two queries really. Uh, like we, uh, when we have worship of Srimati Radha Rani, we have it at a very high level, right? Like uh, when we hear to uh, Srila Prabhupada's classes, we are told that Srimati Radharani's feet is also not being shown to the devotees on only on specific occasions we are able to see her. So, uh, like only Radhashtami or only Gopashtami, we are able to see the feet. So, with respect to that, how should our, like, like everybody is eager to see Srimati Radharani's feet. So, that bhav, like, I don't know, like, how should we be thinking about it or how should we be meditating on the Radhashtami festival to look ahead to Srimati Radharani? Hmm. Yeah. Um, as we take darshan of any deity, we start with the lotus feet like that. But we offer prayers. The mood, it's the it's most important thing is the mood. It should be in a prayerful mood, a mood of humility, a mood of service. When we approach the deity, any of the forms of deity, particularly Radharani, we should be in the mood of service. So we pray to Srimati Radharani, please give us your mercy so we can serve, serve our spiritual master nicely. And so he'll be pleased like that. We can pray for mercy. We can pray for devotional service. We can pray for a greater understanding of the glories of Srimati Radharani and, and of course, Krishna. Radharani by nature is considered to be very, very kind. She's more kinder than Krishna. Prabhupada made it, gave us a little statement. He said that, he says, mother is more kinder than father. Because on Janmashtami, we fast tonight. On Radhashtami, we fast half a day. So who's more kinder? So that's Radharani, she's very kind. So as, as long as we keep the mood of humility and submission, we're not trying to, you know, uh, somehow approach by learning something. We're not trying to learn so much when we approach. We're trying to be in the mood of service. We pray for service. We pray for devotion. We pray for for the opportunity to advance in Krishna consciousness. We are not jnanis. We're bhaktis. Jnanis are always trying to learn so many things. But the, but the bhaktis are always trying to serve and offer devotion and knowledge comes when we we're in the right mood of service automatically so Maharaj, i always yes. had this go ahead yeah i always had this question when like um i did not i was not able to ask anyone so i think i'll take the opportunity to ask you uh, Maharaj, we do not feel um, like that we are, we are not uh, like, um, we are not in the position to serve Radharani directly, right? So, but whenever I'm on the altar, I always have that hesitation to touch Radharani's feet. I do not feel that I am capable to do it or I should not be doing it. So, am I thinking it right or I should go ahead and if there is an opportunity, I should go and touch her feet? I don't know. You, can, do touch it. Your, you can touch your feet in your mind. <laughs> So Maharaj, uh, continuation of the same question, when we are doing DT dressing at home, 
uh, how we should approach DT dressing? Because well, with humility, with submission, with a desire to, to, to offer the nicest service we can in the form of dressing, a nation of moods, humble, but at the same time very much attentive to making our offering of dressing in the nicest possible way. Okay. But during mm -hmm. those processes, we are touching the DTs and, uh, uh, and then we are like uh, touching their feet, we are touching them, sometimes we are twisting them a little bit to make the dressing nice. So how does uh, our mood should be? As long as you're in the right mood, then your service will be accepted. And you should also, you also be very gentle when it comes to handling deities like that. We should not be passionate because if you're passionate, you can also make mistakes and sometimes commit offenses. You should be very, very attentive. Mind should be fixed on the service. There shouldn't be any external distractions or even your mind should not be wandering to other things while you're doing the service. If you're touching the deities, you have to touch the deities in order to serve them. Well, that, that, is, that is ordinary, that's natural. You can't avoid that. So there's, the, the mood is the most important thing along with the desire to do the service in the nicest way. I think one of the things that we have to uh, make sure that doesn't enter into our uh, service is that the desire to do it quickly so we can finish and do something else. That uh, when you have home deities, you're not restricted so much by the time element. When you're at the temples, there is a time for directing the deities. And, uh, I was a pujari for many, many years. And so uh, we would always have to work with the time element also. And when the, the time came for the open the curtains, if we weren't finished, it didn't matter. We would open the curtains anyway. And so only those devotees who could do the service in the time that was allotted were given that service. And those who failed to do it within the time limit uh, were replaced by others. So deity worship in the temples is highly, highly, what we say, restrictive in terms of how it's done. But at home, you have a little more liberty, uh, liber, liber, liberty to use time and do it in the nicest possible way. Same with offerings and cooking like that. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anyone Thank else? you so much, Maharaj. Thank, Thank you, you, Sita. Hare Krishna. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll begin uh, giving a presentation on Friday, is that correct? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Um, I would send you the list uh, uh, shloka number because during the week we will make some progress and based on that probably on Wednesday I will send you the shloka number for next uh, okay. Friday. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for your um, guidance and association. Okay, I wish everyone well, stay healthy amidst this uh, somewhat very unusual time that we're in in history. Keep good health and uh, keep up your sadhana. We have more time now since we are not so much moving around to uh, put a lot of more emphasis and quality. So chant nicely, read Srila Prabhupada's books, and uh, plan how we're going to serve more and more when the future comes. It's a goal, also a good time for planning for the future as we are in our present situation. Okay.
I offer my obeisances to everyone. Thank you very much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So Thank you so much glories for Glories to Sita Thakurani. All glories to Sri Mati Raharani. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Maharaj. Kuti Kuti Dandwat Pranam. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Shambhori. Thank you, and, uh, Thank you Maharaj. Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. I feel like I'm in charge. <laughs> I am. I was missing, Maharaj, the deity that I would like to give you the deity darshan. Oh, yes, please. Yeah. Oh, oh, open your screen up all the way if you can. Uh, I may have to do a spotlight on that. Mataji, can you uh, focus on us as spotlight? Yes, Jagannath. Yes. So yeah. lovely. Wow. I think this is the nicest, nicest darshan I've ever had with your deities. It's so lovely. Very nice. Uh, thank you, Prabhuji. Shamagori Mataji. Thank you, Mataji, for sharing. Mataji. Krishna. After the call, we have our Sunday Mangal Arati program, so we are just getting ready for that. Thank you. I'm a little ahead of you in time, so my Mangal Arati is finished. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, virtually coming to Charlotte. <laughs> Atarva. Yeah, she is. Adarva, my basis. How's life? <laughs> I didn't get. Good, good, good. Yeah. Uh, I was reading. Recently, I was reading about the great sage whose name is Adarva. It's a pretty powerful personality. <laughs> nice to see you. I hope everything is well. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Where's your daughter? She's at Raleigh. She's at university? Yes. No, she's working now. So she's in a vaccination department in Raleigh uh, Duke Medical College. So she is actually spending time on doing some coronary virus research. Whoa, we pray that she stays healthy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, offer my respects to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.